Welcome to our first session of Studio From Home with the Art Gallery of Nova Scotia. My name is Lux. Some of you may know me as a regular art instructor with the art education programming at the gallery. Today I'm going to show you a fun and simple art activity that you can do from home. For step-by-step -step instructions for this video, as well as many other art activities, please visit the Art Gallery of Nova Scotia's website. So today, I'm going to show you how to make standing paper sculptures that require very few materials and that can offer a large range of results and possibilities depending on your dedication and ambition. Taking inspiration from the Art Gallery of Nova Scotia's permanent collection, I'd like to explore a sculpture which I'm sure many of you are familiar with. This activity is based on the larger-than-life outdoor bronze sculpture by the Canadian sculptor John Greer, situated just outside the entrance of the Art Gallery of Nova Scotia. Completed in 1995, the work first started as a miniature model, also called a maquette, in 1994. So we're going to be exploring something similar. Miniature versions of 3D forms out of paper. So before we get started, I'd just like you to consider what's really fun about this work? What's particularly interesting about this sculpture? I really love abstract art because we get to use our imagination. It's non-representational, which, me which means we get to determine what we see in the objects, especially the large sculpture rather than the maquette. It's quite creature-like. Um, you can walk in between and around, which was something that Greer was often interested in, how humans relate to form. 3D work, unlike 2D work, is considerate about light and space. So especially as we make these little sculptures, I want you to consider as you move them around, all the different ways that you can look at them, but also the way they play with light, shadow, and try to imagine if they were in a landscape, how they would interfere with the wind blowing, people interacting with them. So in order to do this activity, we will need a few basic materials. First, a nice flat working area, scissors, tape, pencil eraser, a ruler, marking tools so that we can take our pieces to the next level markers or coloring pencils and last but not least paper so as paper is our primary working material it'd be good to have quite a few sheets it really doesn't matter what kind of paper Cardstock is ideal because it's a bit stiff, so it'll help it stand, but really it can be done with any kind of paper. White printer paper, lined paper, construction paper, so you've already got your color palette down to play with. So we're gonna begin with our sheet of paper. We're gonna take our piece, fold it in half, press right down the middle, and open it back up. So I'm going to take my ruler now, I'm going to place it down the middle of my fold. It doesn't have to be precise the middle, just as accurate as you can. We're going to make a mark on either side of our ruler. And this center right here, this is going to be considered our spine, the center piece holding the entire sculpture up. So it is very important that we don't cut into this piece, just around it. So, there's lots of different ways to approach this. I can either, like in this example, I did lots of curved legs. Straight legs are also an option. And as you keep going, you can get really elaborate and make spiky legs and asymmetrical legs as well. So for this one, I'm gonna go with some rectangles, some square legs, just from the center out. A few thin, a few thicker. So I've got one, two, three, four. That's a good number. 
I'll do that on the other side too. From the center out, just like the other side. And one more. So this is what it should look like for now. I'm ready to grab my scissors and I'm going to be cutting along all the lines that are not the center piece. So everything else but the center. I'm going to take my scissors, just cut along here. There we go. It's good to start with straight lines and round lines, then get in really complicated with lots of little spikes and stuff, but there we go. That side, move on to the other side. quite love paper as a medium. It's quite underestimated. And we always consider it purely a two-dimensional surface working material. What's fun about white paper too, plain old white paper, is that you can see your colors really well. So you can add your markers and coloring pencils and then choose your own color scheme and bring that in afterwards. All right. So now we should have something looking like this. You can see all those little leggies moving. So the way we're gonna start making this be able to stand, we're gonna take the two bottom pieces and fold them on the spine lines. So we're gonna fold them towards us first. There we go. The second row, instead of towards us, we're going to fold it back. It can get a little tricky depending on how many legs you've drawn as well. So try and keep track. So next row, we're going to switch again. We're going to fold it towards us. Next row, backwards. So we started with front, front, back, front, back. There we go. And last but not least, this big old guy up here. We're going to fold it towards us. All righty. So we are about ready to see it stand. So here we go. If you need to, straighten the legs out a little bit. You can change the angles, all this and that. And there you go. Quite strange looking, eh? And depending on the angle, it's almost like an optical illusion. But you can imagine this sculptural form if you have a landscape or platform available, you can tape this guy down on there and you can create little characters to walk through and without all the different sides. I've started with this guy here that I colored. Color adds a whole different dimension to it. So just like the other one, I'm going to fold forward, backward, forward, backward, and forward. And you can see with this one too, I created a little groove at the top. It can be pointy, it can be straight, however you like. And there we go. Take a look at this guy. All the different colors shifting. Different ways to look and interpret it. Especially with sculpture, you can play with light. So you can put it by the window and see how the sunshine and shadows play with the work. 
You can imagine John Greer's working process, how working in space is a very different consideration than working two-dimensionally. These are a few other examples of using construction paper that already have color. You can see here some spiked lines I made. They're quite funny too when they're not folded too intensely. This guy here just has little soft folds, so it's not very spider-like. It's just kind of sitting like this. It has spiky tips. Last but not least, this funky guy. So if you can imagine how I did this, I have one spine in the center, but I have two more spines out here. So all in all, one, two, three major folds that allowed for this really complex maquette model to stand. Take a look. Whoa. We would love to see what you created, so please tag us on social media so that others can see your creations as well.